Today's review looks extensively at the thermals and noise of MSI's RX 5700 XT Evoque OC card. It's named OC because it has a higher stock clock than average and higher than some other partner models too, although the actual overclocking performance for all of these cards is limited primarily by silicon quality and memory controller quality, not really by PCB. We'll be most heavily comparing the 5700 XT Evoque to the Sapphire 5700 XT Pulse, which performed excellently and got our recommendation in the review. The Evoque OC should cost around $430, although the price isn't final at time of writing, and that'd put it about $10 to $20 ahead of Sapphire's pricing, or $30 over AMD's reference card. We'll go deep with thermal and noise analysis today, alongside some gaming performance, to see if MSI's Evoque OC is worth the extra money. Before that, this video is brought to you by Audible. Audible has a massive audiobook library, including content that talks computers and games. Audible has an entire series from the official Computer History Museum, which we've actually toured in the past and can support as a leader in computer education. Audible also hosts the Ultimate History of Video Games, something I read back when researching GN content and can highly recommend for gaming and hardware enthusiasts. Audible's 30-day free trial can be unlocked at audible.com slash gamersnexus, or you can text gamersnexus, one word, to 500-500, where you'll get a free audiobook and two Audible originals, or click the link in the description below. MSI is really trying to make black and gold a thing. They're trying pretty hard. So we talked with them at Computex about this, and basically they're pushing the change through things like the motherboards as well. So you see the godlike and the meg introduce the ace rather the meg ace introducing some of the initial gold and black concepts and now the video cards are coming out with those as well so aside from the performance which we'll get to and is obviously the most important aspect of this review the look side of things basically boils down to do you want a sort of champagne gold colored it's sort of gold not i don't know it depends on your definition of gold champagne colored card in your computer mixed with maybe a gold and black msi motherboard and if you do well Good luck finding other options than the Titan V. But that's not really why we review cards. It's just something we thought we'd point out. The reason we review cards is for the actual performance. So things like build quality, thermals and noise, and to some extent gaming performance. And that's what we're gonna look at today. We explained all this stuff in our Sapphire Pulse review, but to really briefly recap it, with these devices, once you get down to where AMD is pushing the 5700 XT Silicon, there's not a ton more room out of the box to, to pull performance. It's maybe a couple percent extra performance headroom there that you could pull from a better cooler plus a pre-overclock. But beyond that, there's not a ton of room for the board partners to do much. Now there's a little more room for manual overclocking. You get a couple more percent on top of all that, like maybe four or so, but the board partners do have to limit the amount they overclock to things they know will be universally stable. And so they're not gonna push that far past each other. So then, what it boils down to is you shouldn't be buying these based off of who has the best FPS number because it's sort of irrelevant. The max difference you see is maybe a couple percent, as in like two, maybe three, if it's phenomenally different. And that's versus the reference card too, which the Sapphire Pulse is pretty close to. So that if that's the max difference, obviously one, you can overclock them all to about the same level of performance roughly. The memory overclocking is completely luck of the draw. It's based on memory bin, based on memory controller quality. It's things that are outside of both your control and basically out of the manufacturer's control too. These board partners, they're not gonna pick chips for these cards. They're not selling for enough. It's not worth it. That's like kingpin level extra work you'd be doing. So it comes down to you need to tune what you care about to be quality of the card. Is it actually well built? Is it a good design? What are the quality of life features, things like that. So that's what we're looking at today. We will be tearing this card down separately in a different video. If you wanna see what constitutes the cooling performance that we're looking at today and how the, why the acoustics and noise are the way they are, that'll be in a tear down video separately. So subscribe for that. But let's get into the testing. We'll start with thermals at 40 dBA, go through frequency, fan curve, and a couple of game numbers and then close it out with thoughts based on price. We'll start with noise normalized thermals. As always, we use noise normalized thermals to establish a measurement of performance as it relates to efficiency of the cooler. Just testing the cooler stock, which we've done as well, is sort of useful, but it doesn't impose any controls. And so a cooler could top the charts just by having the loudest fans and only showing thermals without any reference to noise 
would eliminate your ability to see which one's truly better. We see this in CPU cooler reviews, especially where some coolers run at 60 dBA and sort of win by default, but no one realistically wants to use it like that. Instead, we normalize the GPU coolers here to 40 dBA in a 26 dB room to establish the best cooler with the best efficiency. The MSI Evoque runs at about 1730 RPM when set to 40 dBA, which is lower than its stock operating target. The Sapphire card runs slightly below 40 dBA on average when stock, so adjusting the 40 dBA gives it a slight performance improvement. The first chart shows GPU edge and junction temperatures. For this one, the Sapphire Pulse leads the chart with a 67.1 degree edge temperature and 83.4 degree junction temperature, contradicting AMD's statement that 110 degree temperatures are expected, something we explained separately. The junction temperature shown here is the single hottest sensor on the die, which can prove useful for illustrating a few things. One, headroom, and two, the potential mounting issues that can arise from various cooler designs. The MSI Evoque at 40 dBA ends up at 69.8 degrees Celsius edge and 87 degrees Celsius for junction. The Sapphire card is leading the pack here, although we're close to our plus or minus one degree error. The reference card at 40 dBA throttled frequency and sat at 110 degrees, which is TJ Maxx and throttle point. Left alone and allowed to run at 51 dBA, a full 10 dBA louder than the other coolers, which against a logarithmic scale, is significant in both acoustic power and perceived loudness, the reference card still manages to be hotter at 95 degrees Celsius. The next chart sticks to 40 dBA noise normalized thermals, but instead shows the VRM MOSFET and VRAM temperatures. MSI falls far behind here, allowing Sapphire a substantial lead in both metrics. The Sapphire Pulse measures at 82 degrees Celsius for the measured GDDR6 module at 40 dBA, with the chosen MOSFET at 68 degrees Celsius. MSI's Evoke OC measured 94.8 degrees for GDDR6, which is, in our eyes, in the territory of unacceptable thermals, especially for an aftermarket cooler. The MOSFET was at 81 degrees, but this is acceptable and well below the specification for the MOSFET's maximum temperatures. It's the memory that concerns us and indicates poor contact or poor design on the cooler, something we'll explore in our separate teardown video of the MSI 5700XC Evoke. Make sure you subscribe to catch that one because we'll look at why this is happening. To pull some footage from our Sapphire Pulse teardown, we can show that now. The reason the card performs so well in VRM and VRAM thermals is because of its heatsink design. Sapphire built separate heatsinks into the base plate of the Pulse, which are cleverly isolated from the GPU itself. This means that the GPU, memory, and VRMs are isolated and split into two groups. The GPU is directly synced by the larger heatsink on top, while the memory and VRM use a separate base plate and fins as their heatsink, then benefit from the air that passes through the upper cooler. Because VRMs can tolerate a lot of heat, this works well, and the memory still gets enough direct airflow that it works out on Sapphire's card. Thus far, Sapphire is doing better in noise normalized testing. Frequency response is up next. We measure in 3D Mark Firestrike Extreme for this, using a fixed workload for a 30 minute period to allow burn in and steady state. The reference 5700 XT bounces the clock around between 1830 MHz and 1910 MHz or so, plus or minus a bit, while Sapphire ran closer to 1900 to 1910 MHz on average. The MSI Evoke runs higher than that, with the pre-launch VBIOS peaking at about 1970 MHz and averaging about 1960. The new VBIOS for retail availability brought frequency down in accordance with lowered fan speeds for reduced noise levels, ending up at about 1950 MHz average. This is significantly higher still than the reference card and boosted about 20 to 50 MHz even over Sapphire, depending on point of measurement. We previously noticed that Sapphire gains over reference were irrelevant for gaming though. So this may not matter and we'll look into that in a bit. The next chart shows fan response to temperature. VBIOS is programmed to configure a set fan speed at a given temperature and ramp that speed depending on the GPU thermals. For this card with the original VBIOS prior to the update, we measured a GPU target temperature of about 67 degrees for the edge when left auto, pushing the fan speed to about 2300 to 2400 RPM once we hit steady state. This is much louder than the 1730 RPM that 40 dBA requires on the cooler, and so performance looks better here, albeit louder. 2300 to 2400 RPM would put noise levels in the range of 47 dBA for reference. With the updated VBIOS, the one which will probably ship on retail cards, we measure fan RPM maxing closer to 2000 RPM, which is a marked improvement in noise levels. 
It does mean that clocks came down a bit, shown earlier, but noise is brought to about 43 to 44 dBA from 47. As reference, we measure at 20 inches away from the video card because this is a reasonable distance for a user to sit from their system, and it's pointed at the GPU. The target GPU temperature seems to be about 68 degrees on the new vBIOS. With a decreased frequency target, this fits together for a quieter card that doesn't sacrifice too much frequency performance. After all, acoustic performance and quality of life are also critical. For the final thermal chart, we're looking at steady state thermals under full auto conditions with no manual tuning at all. This is with the newest retail vBIOS for the MSI Evoque. In this instance, all things left to manage themselves, MSI does have a lower temperature target than Sapphire's 2 vBIOS options and runs more aggressive fan speeds. Even still, GPU junction temperature isn't much different, despite an edge temperature advantage of about 4 to 5 degrees and memory temperatures that are notably higher than Sapphire's. VRM thermals are within reason, although still higher. In this testing, the card's self-managed, so Sapphire ends up quieter than MSI while performing better in two categories and worse in the other two, although similarly for those two. As for the gaming results, it's not quite as boring as the Sapphire versus reference results, but still relatively boring. As a reminder, overall, you're choosing the card really based upon entirely the thermal and acoustic performance. Additional features might add extra value, like dual vBio switches, something the Sapphire card has and neither of these other two do, but the biggest differentiator is acoustics and thermals, particularly when normalized. As seen in these gaming results, there's just not much difference card to card for stock performance. Overclocking also ends up in about the same place for all of them, as it's a silicon limitation, not a card limitation or PCB limitation. We didn't bother plotting an MSI OC here, as it was about the same as the Sapphire Pulse OC and frequency and memory is just based on the memory bin, it's not a card thing, so they're all about the same when overclocked, other than the reference card we had issues with. The Evoke lands at 72.7 FPS average when stock, which has it about 2.4% ahead of the reference 5700 XT's 71 FPS average. That's better than we saw before, but this isn't enough to swing purchasing decisions in favor of one card or another. F1 2018 at 1080p puts the Evoke at 154 FPS average, which is about 2.1% ahead of the RX 5700 XT Pulse, and similarly spaced from the RX 5700 XT reference by AMD, both at 150 to 151 FPS average. This result, again, isn't much of a game changer when considering the deficit in thermals and acoustics, and so ultimately after looking at those two, you're looking at price to figure out which one to buy. At 1440p, the 5700 XT Evoque runs 118 FPS average, with it low scaled appropriately as compared to the other 5700 XTs. The pulse was at 116 FPS average, so the gain is about 2%. 4K shows the Evoque at 70.8 FPS average, leading the Pulse's 69.4 FPS average by 2%, once again, and leading the 5700 XT stock card by AMD similarly. Nothing spectacular. This 1440p Strange Brigade result is the last we'll show. The Evoque ends up at just 1.5% ahead here, at 126 FPS average versus about 125 FPS average, with lows all basically be the same between the Evoque, the Pulse, and the stock 5700 XT reference card by AMD. That's the end of the testing. Like always, we have more game results. It's just, for something like this, it's just it's not worth showing them because it's going to be the same. I'll be saying the same thing over and over for every chart, which is it's like 1.5 to 2.1, 2.2% different from a Pulse or a reference model. So all the games are like that, that we tested. And that's all you need to know about game performance. Thermally and acoustically, this card is behind the curve versus the Sapphire Pulse. Sapphire Pulse is better than this one for acoustics and thermals, especially noise normalized. This card has, if you let them all run completely default, it does catch up a bit to the Sapphire Pulse. It's better in two categories, worse in two categories. And that comes down to MSI running its fan speed faster, higher RPM, so louder. And that's where you see the performance uh, gains versus Sapphire's, which tends to run a bit below 40 dBA when stock in our noise testing. Obviously, DBA changes based on position of measurement, things like that. Noise floor is 26. Distance from the device under test, this thing is 20 inches, and it's in an open air bench. So they're all tested the same way. They're directly comparable. So this card's louder. It's a bit hotter when they're noise normalized. It's hotter in half of the categories when they're left to run auto. And beyond that, it's missing extra features. Like there's no dual BIOS on this one 
which would be really nice to have. That was on Sapphires. We were sad to not see it on the reference card, but Sapphires got an edge there. And then this one is uh, a bit more expensive as well. So really what you're paying for is, is the color here. And if that's your thing, cool, we won't judge you. Go ahead and do it. But we don't have a firm price from MSI. Our understanding is it's supposed to be $430. And the Sapphire Pulse is supposed to be $410. But these cards aren't really widely available yet. We've seen scarce availability. And it was supposed to be everything available last week. Didn't really happen. So maybe this week. And they are starting to populate in some places. But... We don't know when there's going to be wide availability of all the partner models and quantities that people can actually buy. So as of now, for thermals and acoustics, particularly when noise normalized, like as in you run everything at about the same performance level and you don't just kind of let one brute force its way to the top with a louder fan, we would go with the Sapphire Pulse recommendation over this. It's cheaper. It's better thermal and noise performance. Technically, MSI's Evoco C has better out-of-box gaming performance in that it's about 2% ahead, 1.5 to 2.2% ahead of the Pulse or the reference card. There's, It's really hard to care about a couple of FPS because that's kind of what it is. So if you do, cool, but also you can overclock them all to the same level anyway. So it's, it's kind of a wash, and it, it does come down to luck of the draw, which is it's irrelevant which brand you buy. Uh, luck of the draw on the quality of the silicon is totally up in the air. So that's it. That's the 5700 XT Evoque OC review. It is, in fact, overclocked. It has a higher frequency on average than the Pulse and the reference card. It's got not a great cooler, though. We're disappointed in the cooler. MSI's Gaming X cooler was really good in the era of about the 1080 Ti. It was one of the best for noise normalized performance that we had tested for that generation. The Asus Strix was better, but it was more expensive. So the Gaming X was really good. And this kind of falls short of that. It's got some design elements. It's got the fan size, or pretty close to it anyway, uh, if not exactly. But there are some changes, and we'll explore those in the teardown of the card, so check back for that one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus, top side directly, or store.gamersnexus.net if you'd like to pick up a shirt like this one, one of our mod mats, or one of our GPU teardown toolkits. And I guess one final thing I'll say about this that I'd forgotten is that in the very least, it's better than reference. So if you can't get the pulse where you live or it's out of stock basically forever where you are, it, it's not. you don't have to feel bad about buying this. It's just not as good as the pulse, especially in the memory thermals. But maybe that's something we can improve in the teardown. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.